Hey there, this is James Carberry, founder of Sweetfish Media and one of the co-hosts of this show. For the last year and a half, I've been working on my very first book. In the book, I share the three-part framework we've used as the foundation for our growth here at Sweetfish. Now, there are lots of companies that have raised a bunch of money and have grown insanely fast, and we featured a lot of them here on the show. We've decided to bootstrap our business, which usually equates to pretty slow growth. But using the strategy outlined in the book, we're on pace to be one of Inc.'s fastest growing companies in 2020. The book is called Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know. If you're a fan of audiobooks like me, you can find the book on Audible, or if you like physical books, you can also find it on Amazon. Just search content-based networking or James Carberry, C-A-R-B-A-R-Y in Audible or Amazon, and it should pop right up. All right, let's get into the show. Hey everybody, Logan with Sweetfish here. As we've been doing all month long, we continue our countdown today of the top 20 episodes of 2019. Today's episode coming in in the top five is a conversation within our ABM series with James Gilbert on some specific interesting strategies to use direct mail within your ABM campaigns. To get more episodes coming up in the countdown, make sure you're subscribed to the show in Apple Podcasts or wherever you do your listening. You can also check out the full list at sweetfishmedia.com slash blog. Just look for the hashtag best of 2019 in the categories on the right-hand side of that page. All right, everyone. I am Chris Rudigrop, uh, the CEO of Sendoso. We're here on the B2B Growth Podcast interview. Uh, this is the ABM series. I'm joined by James Gilbert from CloudCherry. Uh, welcome, James. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate the introduction. It's fun to be on this. Yeah, I would love a little background maybe uh, on what you do at CloudCherry. Uh, maybe a little background there. Yeah, so I'm our global head of marketing and leading up our go-to market strategy. And we, over the last six months, we've been building a really robust uh, template and execution plan for our account-based marketing. So we've brought on a series of technology partners to help us identify the right accounts. And and then we, we use direct mail as a huge component and channel to make sure that we keep those personalized touches alive. Excellent. Could you give me a few examples of some, uh, some of your favorite direct mail sends? Yeah, uh, you know, one of the first ones that we ever did, and this is a little bit more unique, we, we bought a bunch of Amazon Echoes. And we wanted to send an Amazon Echo to some executive leaders uh, that we were targeting. But we didn't want to just send them the Echo and be like, oh, here's an Echo. We wanted to make it really personalized. And one of the areas that we focus on with our product is predictive analytics. So we all spent a weekend... And we pre-programmed the echoes with some unique questions that we asked. And we gave a prompt card to the executive uh, that said, you know, tell us who CloudCherry is, what's customer experience, and why should it matter to me? And we prompted it. And you can do this all through the Amazon Blueprints. And we sent those out. And oh my gosh, it was a huge hit. That, that's probably one of my favorites because... One of the calls to action on the prompt card was, you know, if this impressed you, would you be willing to give us 10 minutes of your time? And if they said yes, then what it did is it would actually link to the AE's calendar and book a meeting through the Amazon Echo. Wow, that is pretty epic. (laughs) It was it was pretty rad. One of the one of the coolest ones that, that that we've done for sure. But there's a lot of good ones out there. That's awesome. And so was this pretty orchestrated where the AEs were also fu- kind of following up in a timely manner after the delivery? Yeah, you know, it was it was nice because uh, it wasn't just marketing kind of doing this campaign. We had to have specific insights to each one that they were reaching out to. So we didn't just willy-nilly just send, send them a piece and pre-program it. It was customized to each person that they sent it to which that's the personal touch that people really want to see is that you've done your homework. So we had each AE tell us some very specific details about the company, the conversations that they've had with the account, uh, with, with the executives. And then we actually had them help us program them. And then within the process, once they got booked on the booked with a calendar invite, uh, the follow-up was, was pretty simple. Once the, the Amazon echo got to their, their company, 
and that's when we'd get notified via Salesforce. And we would obviously, our, our AEs would follow up, just make sure they got it. Since they were already in conversations with them, it made it really seamless. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Any uh, piece of advice for anything that didn't go 100% right that you kind of learned from to kind of do better the next time? Yeah, I mean, you're only, you can only do these things and execute on them as, as good as the data that you have. So I think that doing a little bit extra homework on making sure that you have addresses right, including, you know, a lot of people are not going to say no if you, if you reach out to them and just be like, hey, you know, I'd really love to send you I thank you. Uh, would you be willing to to give me your guys' company address on where you're located? Because especially if it's a big company, you can go out there and, and try and find it. But there's some people have tons of locations and tons of headquarters. So you have to... I think that's where a lot of people make a mistake is they go off of some of the technologies that enrich data and, and give kind of an address. And they kind of go off of that and they send their direct mail campaigns out and then they get all these returns. And I think you got to do a little bit of homework up front to make sure that you do have a really good address. Yeah, I totally agree. For this campaign, was there other omni-channel, like uh, targeted ads, other kind of drip email campaigns? Was it a kind of a uh, multi-channel approach or was this just a direct mail approach? So this this particular campaign, uh, the only other other channel that we used is we also found uh, people that were not an executive. So they'd be more of your influencer and researchers. And we also sent them something as well as had like a, a, a nurture campaign. So we knew that we were going to be getting the expansion across the account. But the actual echo that we sent, it was just a direct mail piece. But you know, when it comes to Omnichannel, I think it's I think it's really important. And what makes direct mail even more powerful is it's meant to be the personal touch of whatever additional efforts and activities that you're doing. You know, so when you're doing air cover with programmatic ads through, you know, technology like demand base or terminus or whatever platform you might use, what essentially happens is you're you're providing that air cover so that it's visible online, but then in the conversation and with the direct mail piece, that's the part that needs to be really really personalized and and be specific to them because I think that that's what gets the best return. That's just my my opinion and experience. Yeah, I would totally agree there. Are you uh, executing on these direct mail campaigns or just uh, with the uh, sales development team too? Or is this something that you've uh, focused mainly on the account executives? No, we do, we do it with our SDRs as well. So they're, they're heavily involved. So what will happen is if an SDR books a meeting with a particular person at a company... Uh, they're empowered to send a, a thank you note, a handwritten thank you note. Uh, they're also empowered to make sure that uh, if they want to send a gift that's from our swag store or that's something unique that we have, uh, we do that as well. So our SDRs are just as empowered as the AEs, which is really important because if we're going to foster a relationship with them, we need to make sure that the SDRs are fostering the relationship and can seamlessly hand it over to the AE without any real quarrels. Yeah, that makes total sense. What about your your customer success team post sales? Do you see that there's an opportunity there as well, um, especially kind of with account based marketing and wanting to land and expand? Do you have a a separate team that's focused on kind of the expansion or the CSMs also uh, doing that? Yes, we do. Our customer success team, upon them becoming a customer, we send a gift gift basket, and that gift basket includes some things that are Cloud Cherry branded, but then there are also things that are, are just useful in nature. And then the process that we have within marketing is we, we help the customer success team continue to nurture. And once we continue to nurture those prospects through expansion, we actually will we have certain points in which we send out thank you letters. Um, we send out specific gifts that are related to where they're at in their implementation um, and where they're at and just the overall journey with us. Uh, because it's a, it's a long road for us because customer experience, it takes, it takes a, a lot of organizational alignment. And we know that it takes a lot of, of people involved that are outside of t- the typical functions that lead it. Uh, so we also know that those, those other departments and those other functions, they have to be sold on it. Uh, so we're, we're utilizing those touch points as, as a way for us to, to just help them make it a little easier 
Great. Um, and as the head of global marketing, you know, I know you're overseeing a lot of different things. Do you have a dedicated account-based marketer or who's owning kind of the direct mail initiatives at CloudJerry? Yeah, so we don't necessarily have a specific person that, that owns the full process. You know, I know a lot of people don't like uh, marketing by committee, but when it comes to direct mail campaigns and especially ones that we want to do that are really unique and cause a buzz, you know, we, we have a whiteboard meeting and we have the whole marketing department and the sales, sales department come in and we talk through, you know, what are some things that we think could cause some buzz uh, and we just kind of line item those. And then the managers and the senior managers within marketing uh, ultimately make the decision on which ones we should go forward with based on some research that they also do. Um, for example, you know, Stranger Things and, you know, Avengers has been a really, really big uh, kind of pop culture thing in the last six, seven months. And oh, yeah. so some of our direct mail campaigns are going to be very, very uh, specific around those. You know, we're creating like a comic book that's customer experience, that's tailored to customer experience that we're going to be sending out uh, with, with our direct mail campaigns. And so that's, that's kind of the approach that we take is... We don't necessarily do marketing by committee, but we certainly allow insight to come from outside the marketing department. Yeah, I I think that's a a great piece is that creativity can come from a lot of different areas and then having marketing help execute on it just makes everything run smoother. Um, So I know you spent a little bit of your early days at CloudCherry on the marketing ops side. Um, I assume, you know, running reports, looking at ROI, all that good stuff. Um, so we'd love to kind of pick your brain in terms of how you look at the ROI and data around direct mail and what you've seen uh, work well for you. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> and you're right. Being, being from marketing ops, I'm, I'm a very analytical person when it comes to being data-driven. So every single channel that we use within our marketing or in sales for that matter, is tracked. And you know how, how we typically would do that, like we, we use attribution, uh, an attribution company called Visible, and, and that allows us to tie some of these direct mail campaigns specifically to campaigns in Salesforce and to contacts in Salesforce that we send those to. And then we, we, we essentially can run those reports against certain channels to see which ones are influencing and making the biggest impact on revenue. And direct mail is is one of the one of the primary channels. It's in a, it's in our top five channels. And when you when you think about that, 10, 15 years ago, direct mail being a channel was almost not even heard of, and it's making a comeback. And I think one of the reasons why it's making a comeback is again all around the fact that people want more of a of a human and personal touch with their interactions with businesses. Because Chris, I'm sure you can relate to this. Uh, being a CEO, but you, you as well as many of many of us other executives, probably get thousands of emails every week. Oh yeah, <laughs> pitching something, right? And or or how about LinkedIn invitations where you don't even know the person and you're sending them a specific uh, sales pitch, right? People want more personal touches where you've done your homework and. Or, or try to make the interaction and relationship fun with them. And I think direct mail really allows companies to bring that back. And I think it's something that a lot of people are missing. Very cool. Um, so I know, uh, you know your title is global marketing. So I imagine you guys are doing stuff overseas as well. Um, have you experimented with direct mail and MIA or APAC yet? Or have most of your initiatives been uh, domestic here based in the U.S.? No, we definitely have. And it's, it's a totally different market over there. You have to be very careful with what you send. Over there, you're not typically allowed to send packages, but you are allowed to send like a, a thank you note or a, a personalized card that you've handwritten. Uh, those kinds of things can definitely be done. Over there, it's even difficult to reward people with, with gifts and even customers that we have over there we, we, we sometimes can't even deliver a gift to a customer that we have. So you have to treat it in a different way and you have to be a lot more creative. So we have our, our AEs and our SDRs over there. Uh, they're, they're consistently sending handwritten notes all the time to their prospects. And I would say in some cases that, that that's enough over there. So that's, that's primarily what we've been learning is is the handwritten note goes a lot further than than nothing at all. 
Yeah, one thing we're seeing um, over there that's interesting is the more of spending the f- extra creativity and extra expense on creating really customized, unique boxes. Uh, like, for example, uh, a box that looks like a laptop and opens up and plays a video where there's no yeah. monetary value, but the ex- creative experience that comes from it kind of uh, wows the, the prospect of the customer. So I think uh, there's certain industries as well where if you get more creative with the, the box and the form factor and the messaging, uh, you don't always need to have some kind of gift attached to it. So True. That's very true. You're talking about the ones that have like the, the video that plays automatically when you open it up and, and those kinds of things. I, I love those. Yeah, exactly. Or we've seen one that's like a box that looks like a phone that plays a video or a briefcase that kind of folds out into this really cool looking like uh, diagram thing. So there's a bunch of different ways you can get creative with the box itself that will kind of break through that noise and you know show that prospect or that customer that you've taken the extra effort to kind of personalize that uh, direct mail experience for them. Yeah, it's interesting because I had a conversation with the director of marketing over at G2 Crowd this last week. And one of the things that he was showing me, some of the direct mail campaigns that they're doing here in North America with the pinatogram. I mean, I, I don't know why, but I, that, that just was a, was a hoot to me. I think it's really a matter of just... It doesn't matter what you send. If it's sent in a really creative way, and I think all of it has to do with the delivery. If you just send something with... With no way of it really tying to them, it's it's probably not going to turn out well. But if you have a really good delivery and a good message behind it, that's what I think leaves a lasting impression. Definitely, and I think along with that, orchestrating that so that the the next touch point or the previous touch point, whether it's an automated one or whether it's sales taking over or sales actually sending with marketing, just providing the direct mail kind of platform or, or components for that is also a key component so that there's consistency and it's not uh, just sent and you know waited on, but it's you know very methodically followed up with. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else are you doing? Anything else in ABM that's exciting for you or any other uh, tools or platforms that you've uh, you know seen work well in an ABM strategy? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier. We have Terminus and Demandbase that we use for our programmatic ads. And we're using Demandbase to kind of personalize the website. And then we're using Drift to kind of keep the customization on the website visit where we're doing welcome messages with our ABM. But we kind of take it another step further because we know that in some cases you you can't totally personalize the experience with everybody, but you certainly can by vertical. And we we have enough data with our tech stack to identify what vertical somebody might be coming in from, from their IP. So we'll actually customize a specific playbook and toolkit around those things. And that toolkit will, will come up with like nine assets that they can go through that uh, helps them get organizational alignment, helps them prove the ROI of customer experience. And that kind of stuff has really, really worked well for us. And then when we have the AEs and SDRs just give that personal touch with the, with the direct mail piece, it kind of just brings it to full fruition that like we've done our homework and we're, we're going to do everything we can to empower those companies. But more importantly than ever, we're, we're trying to drink our own Kool-Aid. And that's to make sure that we provide a good experience for everybody. Because I think for a long time, ABM has been kind of a buzzword. And you know, you're, you're constantly talking about you know, how you do ABM. And I think people tend to forget that really what ABM is, is a, just a more targeted and personal marketing effort. And when you take out the buzzword, I think that, that you, can, you can take more of an ABM approach and it's on the account. I think a lot of people get hung up on that on that particular phrase ABM because they just they think oh my gosh well how do I do it and it takes so much so much time it it really doesn't it's just a matter of identifying you know where your focus is what your go to market strategy is and then making sure that your technology and your people and your processes um, can match that Totally. Well, we're, uh, James, we're running up uh, on time here. So I think if I had to take kind of three takeaways here from the conversation, I think one, personalization. It seems like that has been uh, an amazing part of your success with these campaigns is just, you know, focus on the personalization. Uh, 
it sounds like the second piece, data, 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 whether it's uh, the data for sending, the data for you know other types of personalization, but having a strong data uh, strategy is key. And then lastly, you know, kind of empowering the sales team and working together with the sales team on these uh, direct mail campaigns is another key part of the success. Yeah, it's been fun. I've thoroughly enjoyed helping build an ABM model. And I think that we're seeing the fruits of the, of the labor uh, happen a lot faster than we anticipated. And it's just, it's just a lot. I think it's a funner way to do marketing, to be honest with you. Love it. Well, hey, James, thanks again for being on the B2B Growth Podcast and looking forward to continuing the conversation offline. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Logan with Sweetfish here. If you're a regular listener of B2B Growth, you know that I'm one of the co-hosts of this show. But you may not know that I also head up the sales team here at Sweetfish. So for those of you in sales or sales ops, I wanted to take a second to share something that's made us insanely more efficient lately. Our team has been using Lead IQ for the past few months, and what used to take us four hours gathering contact data now takes us only one. We're 75% more efficient, we're able to move faster with outbound prospecting, and organizing our campaigns is so much easier than before. I'd highly suggest you guys check out Lead IQ as well. You can check them out at leadiq.com. That's L-E-A-D-I-Q.com.